Greetings. My name is Abigail. Right now, I'm taking care of things while my husband, Jackson, is away on a job. Even though he's busy with work, we're as close as ever. He tries to give me a call every day unless he's swamped with work. At first, I thought we were fresh newlyweds living miles apart. What gives? But I've gotten used to it. I wasn't ready to ditch our apartment. We weaved together, obsessing over the layout and floor plan. Jackson got that, so I waved him off to his solo work assignment. My friends were like, you work from home, you could have gone with him. But I sort of liked those daily calls. And then, like a bolt from the blue, someone rolls into town looking to rock the boat. Her name is Sienna. She's Jackson's big sister, two years his senior. His folks live a long haul away and Sienna was supposed to be back in our hometown, but for some reason, she moved to my neck of the woods. Suddenly, she started dropping by my place. Abigail just popping in for a visit, still living that hermit life, I see, she'd chirp. Yeah, I don't step out much, but that's because I'm a remote worker. And unless I've got errands or need to hit the store, I'm usually home, I'd replied. Sienna started ribbing me, calling me a hermit. I mean, she's not wrong, but it's a bummer. Sienna treats everyone the same, if you catch my drift. But she doesn't seem to get the concept of personal space. When Jackson took me to meet his folks, she was all up in my grill. Even during our engagement announcement, she bombarded me with totally uncalled for questions. The kind that makes you want to forget they were ever asked. How many guys have you been with? She'd pry. Is there someone else in the picture besides Jackson? Maybe that's normal chit-chat among tight-knit friends, but she was acting like a complete stranger. Zero chill. Back then, Jackson's parents laid into her, but when she swings by my place, it's just us. As Jackson's wife, I couldn't exactly flip my lid or cause a scene. I knew Jackson and his folks would have my back if she crossed the line, but she could still make me look bad to others, so I couldn't just give her the boot. Thanks to her, I have to hit pause on work and play hostess. After roughly 30 minutes to an hour of chatter, she hits the road, tossing out something like, Ain't I the best for coming to hang with my hermit sister-in-law? I didn't invite her, and her visits just mess up my work rhythm and wear me out. She's always invading my personal space and spouting off. Truthfully, it's super aggravating, but I can't muster up the guts to face her. I've thought about bringing it up to my hubby, but if he told her to stop coming by, she would sniff out that I spilled the beans. That would put her in a foul mood. Jackson once mentioned she can't stand feeling left out. And at the end of the day, I don't want anyone to have beef with me. So I've been putting up with her bi-weekly visits, kicking myself for being so wishy-washy. Then, about six months after she moved to my area, she drops this bombshell. So this Adam is my boyfriend right now, she stated. Nice to meet ya. Like you said, Sienna, this girl does seem to listen well. But a hermit? Haha. <laughs> Did your bro get the raw end of the deal? Adam chuckled. Hey, watch it. Jackson is a bit of a klutz, you know. He only managed to snag a girl who seems a bit quirky and klutzy like this one, Sienna added. I figured it was just Sienna dropping by as usual, so I opened the door. Then, out of nowhere, a tall guy emerges from behind her, and they both stroll into my place. They had the audacity to openly size me up and gab about their rude conversation. Um, who's this guy? I asked trying to make sense of the situation. I already told you, he's my boyfriend, she said, then added with a smirk. Actually, we're planning to tie the knot. Isn't marriage such a drag? But Jackson does have a job and can support you while you're cooped up in here. We're not really into the whole work thing, so we are thinking of moving into this apartment, she concluded unceremoniously. Wait, wh what? I was stumped. I couldn't make heads or tails of what she was rambling about. Where did she get the idea that Jackson was my meal ticket? I work from home, and right now, I'm the one footing the bill for this place, with Jackson and I keeping our finances separate in exchange. We've agreed to suck away a fixed amount each month into a joint account. We are both on the same page about this, and the money has been steadily piling up, so I'm not living off him or anything. Actually, it's more accurate to say I'm self-sufficient. Plus, her remark about not wanting to work and thinking about moving into this apartment, I can't make sense of it. How could she think she can just crash in a room in my apartment, especially with her boyfriend? While I was reeling, Sienna and Adam began snooping around the house. Up until now, the routine was that I'd usher her to the living room, whip up some coffee and snacks, 
and she'd chat away until she took off. But today was different. They marched straight into our bedroom. This is awesome. The bed is huge and everything's so tidy. We should clear ours out when we move. I will be sleeping in this bed when I move in, Adam said with a grin. This was crossing the line. This bed is something Jackson and I picked out and bought together. It wasn't meant for others to crash in, oblivious to my unease. The two swiftly moved on to the next room. That room is my current workspace. I have a top-notch desktop with dual monitors for my work-from-home gear, and gear like keyboards, mice, mixers, headphones, all handpicked by me, are set up there, I explained, trying to keep my cool. Whoa, this desktop is the bee's knees, I'll snag this, and the chair is top tier too, it will be killer for online gaming, Adam suddenly blurted out. Before I knew it, he'd plopped down in the chair and was rousing my computer from sleep mode. I'd been working just before they showed up, so if it booted up, my work stuff could be on display. Cut it out, will you? I said firmly. I thought this was beyond the pale and yanked the chair away from the computer, then covered the computer with a dust cloth. Enough is enough. You can't just walk into someone else's house and act like you own the place. This is Jackson and my place, I added indignantly, finally standing my ground. I couldn't fathom how anyone could think they could just move in. When I let this out, she looked taken aback, seeing me stand up for myself for the first time. Oh my God, you're so hilarious. Are you cranky or something right now? Things on the rocks with your relationship? Treating us like intruders is such a buzzkill. Don't forget this. I'm going to spill to my brother and folks about this. She spat out and stormed out of the house. Feeling the need for a change, I decided to give my hubby a call one night after his shift. I told him about the countless times Sienna had popped over, about her bringing her boyfriend this time, aiming to crash at our place, about him trying to mess with my computer without asking, and their plan to use the bed we'd selected together. He was floored by his sister's nerve. In an effort to comfort me, he uttered, Oh man, I had no idea. Thanks for filling me in. I breathed a sigh of relief, expecting him to be ticked that I hadn't brought it up earlier. And then we tossed around ideas on how to handle Sienna and her shenanigans. Despite our chats and the measures we took, she showed up at our pad alone three days later. Learning from the last run-in, I didn't open the door, even when she made a scene outside. I was on high alert, suspecting that, like before, her boyfriend Adam might be lurking out of sight from the intercom. I cracked the door a smidge, leaving the chain lock on to chat with her. Clearly miffed, she confronted me. Aren't you ashamed to be a hermit forever? As family, it's downright humiliating, she said. I shouted back, Oh, you think I'm a hermit? Yes, you're mooching off Jackson. He's covering your rent and bills. You even get to enjoy all these swanky furnishings and computer. You are living large and it's me, his real family who should be reaping those benefits. Not some outsider like you, she accused. I might not be related to you, but to him, I'm no stranger. I'm his wife, I replied firmly. I didn't say he should put his wife ahead of his lazy, selfish sister, but I was confident he would value me more. All she said was, oh, is that so? I wanted to tell her so much more, but I kept those thoughts to myself. After mulling it over with Jackson, we decided to let her blow off steam, so I neither confirmed nor denied her claims. She ranted, It's so wrong that you're sponging off my brother forever. I've talked to him. The harmed freeloader needs to hit the road now. I doubted she'd really talk to him. Since Jackson and I had been weighing our opinions about Sienna for several days now, there was no way she was going to call the shots. I had also discussed with him what to say if she told me to pack up, and I decided to stick with it. I replied calmly, If that's how you feel, then I'll be on my way. Apparently content with my concession, Sienna said, Well then, I need to get my move on, and promptly hit the road. I needed to get my move on too, though in her case, she probably meant moving in here, which was a no goal. Shortly after, I got a call from Jackson. Abigail, I finished relocating our stuff to the new place. Now we just gotta move your stuff, he reported. All right, I'm planning to move tomorrow, so we'll see each other then, I responded. We had bought a house since his assignment was wrapping up, and we could finally live under the same roof. We'd been house hunting on weekends, so this move was perfectly timed. The next day, I asked the movers to load up my stuff and waved the moving truck goodbye. I stared towards our new place. 
After passing the keys to the landlord and expressing my gratitude, I headed to my car, only to find Sienna and her boyfriend there. We spotted a moving truck earlier. Lucky us that you skipped town so soon. But you're a homebound hermit with no income, right? I'm amazed you had anything to hold to your next place with a moving company when you don't own a thing, she said, sporting a smart grin. I cocked my head and said, Everything in that house was bought with my money, so it's only fair that I take everything with me. At this, she cocked her head in confusion. Huh? What are you babbling about? You're just a hermit freeloader, right? You can't even spring for a single piece of furniture, let alone rent, she retorted. Well, I actually play in about $300,000 a year, I answered back. What? my sister-in-law exclaimed in bewilderment. Ever heard of telecommuting? It's where you work from the comfort of home. You're allergic to work, so I suppose you're clueless about different work styles, huh? I've been home because I've been grinding away there. It's not like I've been lazing around, I explained angrily. But you've never said anything about that, she uttered, her voice tinged with confusion. Well, I did clue you in. When you first swaggered into my place, I mentioned it to you and you just shrugged it off saying, yeah, right, you were probably yucking about daily questing MMOs or something. Those don't count as work, you said. I sighed and added, are there folks who actually count that as work? Sienna glanced at her boyfriend, sitting beside her. Ah, gotcha, she replied. Looks like her boyfriend considers online gaming as work. They both seem to be real work haters, escaping reality through the digital world. But no matter how much you dodge reality, your real-life circumstances aren't going to change. Up to now, I've been the one holding down the fort here. I've paid the rent, and I bought all the furniture. The reason for uprooting this time is to bank up with Jackson. My single gig stint is over, I concluded. So where the hell are we supposed to crash now? They inquired. We thought we could just continue squatting in this crib. Well, I wouldn't know about that. Who made that promise? I asked. At least I didn't get the memo, and I didn't pass it on to the landlord either. I also got the skinny from Jackson over the phone yesterday, that he didn't get a word about it, I added. They must have assumed that since Jackson is her brother, they could hit him up for everything. What pie-in-the-sky thinking? But I thought my bro had the lease, Sienna continued. Didn't you call him up? I asked in surprise. He told me it wasn't in his name when I called, but I thought he was just messing around, she replied. I don't think he would joke about something like that. You and Jackson are as different as day and night after all. You are just like the epitome of rudeness, I responded. At my words, Sienna's eyes popped and her face gradually turned beet red. I figured she was going to bark back at me, but the next moment, her boyfriend, who was standing next to her, suddenly blurted, I shouldn't have swallowed everything you fed me. I'm dumping you. My sister-in-law was stunned. Hold up. What's got into you all of a sudden? She exclaimed. You said that if I stuck with you, your family would provide a pad and cover living costs. I thought I might as well move in with you. But if there's no place to crash and no dough, there's no point in sticking around. So I'm dumping you, Adam concluded, and a brawl erupted. I beat it out of there fast. They say lovers' tiffs are the devil's delight, and it's clear that if I hung around I would get roped in. Even so, I thought she was quite a piece of work. But her boyfriend seems to be just as rotten, if not more. He's the type who just muscles into someone else's path, buys into the rosy stories she's been feeding him, and rumbles about using the computer in bed. I was aware of his level of decency, but what happens to them in the future is none of my business. When I reached the house where Jackson was waiting and started unpacking, a call buzzed in from Sienna. He didn't want to pause the unpacking, so he fielded the call on speaker. Jackson, I just got kicked to the curb by my boyfriend because of your wife, she whined. I had already filled him in about the scrabble she kicked up with her boyfriend before I left, so he knew I wasn't the guilty party. It's on you for jumping the gun and going off half-cocked. You crashed into my wife's crib and acted like it was your kingdom, trying to mess with the computer in the bed. I don't want any ties with a nasty piece of work like you, Jackson said. What are you jabbering about, Jackson? Sienna tried to object. Our folks got wind of this, and they've said they've had their fill of your antics, so you're probably cut off. And the cash you swiped when you flew the coop. They said it's your walking papers. Don't count on any inheritance, he concluded. What? She gasped. It must have been a whirlwind for her. She got dumped by her boyfriend. Can't relocate. 
and her brother and parents she was banking on are cutting her loose. She can't expect any windfall from her folks. Well, she has made her bed, I thought. Jackson and I blocked her number and decided to turn over a new leaf as a wedded couple in our new place.